All right, guys, uh, let's get started with our first assignment here. I want to take a moment to make sure that all of you are setting things up properly um, in your file. And let me just say this real fast. The first thing you should do anytime you start a new Rhino file is verify that the units are correct. So usually what I start off with when um, I create a new project and it gives you that little menu that pops up, I choose large objects and feet. Um, if you want to check the standard unit, it's in this little block down here. It should say feet. And if it doesn't, if it says millimeters or inches or something like that, um, I'm going to show you how to correct it right now. <clears throat> so um, all you have to do is just type in units and it'll bring you to, um, ooh, my properties pages are off screen. It'll bring you to the properties menu um, where, and specifically to the units page. So if you go to the model units here and you look at um, what setting it is, if it was millimeters, I need you to switch it to feet before we do anything. Um, if you care about certain things, you could switch these to um, feet and inches if you wanted to always show up like that. Um, usually I just leave it as decimal. Um, it doesn't matter to me how it shows up. That's a personal preference for you guys if you want. So um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, quickly reiterate is that I don't like the grid. So those of you who have taken my class, you already know that. I usually turn it off or sometimes I just neglect it. But um, the first thing that I usually do when I get in the file is I turn the grid off. So I type in grid and then H to hide it. And you have to do that in each one of the views. Oops. There you go. Now you don't have to do that, but I did. So I like to work with a clean model. It helps me see what's going on a little bit better. Um, so anyway, uh, let's talk about some of the things that we're going to use. So I mentioned that we're not going to go through all the minutia of how the tools work. Um, I'm going to show you some, some, some quick things to fix it. And I want you to all be aware of grid snap and gumball. They're going to be huge for what we're doing pretty much anyway. And smart track, I guess, a little bit. So they all kind of exist down here on this bar, very, very important ones. I don't ever want to see any of your grid snap settings on. Never, never, ever, ever turn grid snap on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know. I just, I can't stand it. Uh, so anyway, um, gumball is this one right here. Mine was already on. And I want you to click on O snap if it wasn't already um, popped up. So this little bar down here is your object snap bar. I know it's harder for you guys to see it, um, but it's this little guy right, here, right there. If you don't see those check boxes, um, then click on O snap and it'll pop up. So a lot of files, yes. Are you actually recording? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Usually there's a little green bar that blinks on the right, but I guess it's calibrated properly, so it's not showing you right now. But thank you for checking. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, the check boxes down the bottom, these are going to be how you're defining the things that you can just kind of like click and grab and align and snap and um, you know it's and pull your smart tracks from. So uh, you know I think generally all of you know how they work. If you want a quick primer of what they are, I can do that. Just raise your hand if you want me to take a minute and do it. Okay. So um, end the one all the way to the left. Generally speaking, always keep it on. Always, always, always keep end on because it's just going to snap to any corner point, any edge or lines corner point um, anywhere in the, uh, in the model that you place your mouse and click, right? Um, the other one near is not really all that important. It'll basically, if you have a line in space somewhere, I don't need to show you really, but um, if you have a line in space in somewhere and, you're, and your mouse is kind of near it, it'll just go to the nearest aligned point on any kind of geometry. Um, so I don't usually leave that on. Point is obviously going to attach directly to a point. Um, I usually keep midpoint on 
and center point. Midpoint is the midpoint of a line. Center point is the center point of a circle. Know the difference? Um, and then I usually keep intersect and perpendicular on at all times. Um, so intersect is anywhere there are two lines that are actually crossing one another. And uh, perpendicular is if there's a line in space and you're trying to draw another line to it, then it'll find the perpendicular point and connect it. Right? Pretty good primer. And you'll see how they work as I go through it. But um, yeah, so uh, those are the big ones. You don't really have to worry about those other ones hardly at all, if ever, especially not in this assignment. OK? Now, um, what I want you guys to do, and I'm just going to quickly show you creating a box uh, for the beams. So I mentioned in the assignment that we have three beam sizes, 4 inches uh, by 8 inches, 6 by 12, and 8 by 16. Um, the way that I typically do this is I'll draw one at like a standard size, and then I'll copy two of them real fast, and I'll just modify them. Because I don't, I don't generally like to type in all those figures every time but I know that they go up in increments of double and they go up in increments of two in the other direction. So I'll just show you how I do it here. Um, the, I'll go over layers later. Anyway, um, so the box command is right here, or you could type in box and hit enter. Um, but to start at the origin, I just type in zero comma zero and hit enter. And then in order to make it go in the direction it needs to go, it's just going to go x direction, then y direction, then z direction. Uh, sorry, x and y in one part of the command, and then z in the other part of the command. So I'm just going to make it a standard length of 10 feet, comma, however wide it's going to be, so 4 inches for that first one, and hit enter. And you'll see that it creates the bottom face of that beam. And then it says, how high do you want this to be? So I'll make it 8 inches. So this is a 4 inch by 8 inch by 10 foot long beam. OK. And then um, real quick, well, maybe I should pause and let you guys do that before I go to the real quick part. So I'll take a moment here. <laughs> 